We got some more news coming about that could be possibly coming in NAB, which is shaping up to be a very big event. And I'm kind of sad that I'm not going to be able to get there. Uh, this time we got some news coming out regarding Panasonic. And it looks like we're looking at multiple cameras that become that will be coming out for them. One we had that a lot of the rumors already have an idea. Could the other one or at least one of the other ones be potentially a new GH7? Let's talk about it. I'll give my thoughts and sort of go over everything in this video. What's going on everybody? My name is James Jackson. Thank you for being back to my channel. If you're new here, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if this is content that you definitely enjoy, please definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So we got some more rumors coming about. Well, they're rumors, but they're not really rumors. They're semi-confirmation. But essentially, it's now been broken that two more cameras have been registered in China by Panasonic. And that now brings the total up to three cameras that have been registered. And typically when Panasonic registers can cameras, I'm sorry, in China, it typically means that they're pretty much two to three months away from being announced. Now, what could these potentially be? Well, one of them from L Rumors truly believes this one is going to be the S1R Mark II. And the reason being is that the there was an agreement between Leica and Panasonic that Leica will release their camera first, which was the SL3, which has recently been released. And then Panasonic will release their version of their camera with roughly the same specs, same sensor, same size thing, but a couple more video features that we typically expect from Panasonic. And most people today have essentially believe that that is going to be the S1R Mark II. So basically the S1 Mark II is going to get that same 60 megapixel backside illuminated sensor that is in the like SL3. Well, we hope it's backside illuminated. I don't know if that is, but we're going to definitely get the same sensor. There are a lot of the similar features, um, which is interesting because the SL3, as most of y'all know, shoots 8K or has the capability of shooting 8K. Um, the, I say it's interesting because Panasonic has, as far as we know, has basically said they are not interested in moving into 8K anytime soon. So could this be a, a breakaway from what could this potentially be? Who knows? And it's also interesting that this is coming about as well after that interview uh, with one of the leaders of Panasonic talking that with Cine D that gave a, how, how should I put this? A really nothing burger interview by saying a lot, but not really saying a lot. It was, it was, it, it, there was a lot of, let's just say there was a lot of word dancing going along and a lot of sticking to the PR talking points in that interview. And you can clearly tell, and again, it could be translation, uh, but you can clearly tell he was reading off a laptop what he was going to say, which was, again, interesting. If you, if you haven't seen the Cine D interview, I would at least let you go check it out so you could see for yourself and sort of gauge what your thoughts are. But the long story short is they basically dodged the idea that they're ever going to go more of the dedicated pro video lineup and pretty much their focus is exclusively on hybrid. So what I'm trying to say is there is maybe a potential that there may be 8K video coming in the S1 R2, especially given the fact that there is no longer any sign, at least right now in the foreseeable future, that Panasonic is going to release a dedicated video camera, which would, is a real shame. But the question is now, what is the other two cameras? Now, one of them is, there was rumored to be a compact camera that was supposed to be presented. Maybe like a rangefinder style. Um, 
which I think that would be to, you know, add to Panasonic's arsenal. I think that would be, uh, personally, from a good look. For me, as a filmmaker and a video focused person, I don't really find the interest in something like that. I've been very, very clear on what I want from Panasonic. There's really three things. One, I want open gate uh, options that have much better bit, bit depth quality. Instead of 10-bit 420, 10-bit 422 with higher data rates because the compression is just too, to me, it decreases the image quality to where I don't want to use it. The other option is better, better rolling shutter performance, but more specifically, better um, frame rate options in the full frame mode. We still don't have that in any of their cameras. And the last thing is a BS1H Mark II style body that has that sort of box style, but has both two video sources out. Those are really the things that I am looking for from Panasonic this year. So maybe a compact version or could be the BS1H Mark II. I would really, really hope so. But again, there's also then the third camera that has been registered. And again, it's not necessarily confirmed that all three of these cameras are going to be announced at NAB. It's just very likely. And if one of them is more on the filmmaker, like focus, video focus side, it's most likely that one, something like maybe an S1H Mark II, or as the one I'm, again, looking for, the BS1H Mark II, the likelihood of that camera being announced is most likely in city gear, which would be in the summer. Um, but we don't know, we'll see, but there at least there's a very strong possibility that there's a good chance we'll see the, something like the S1R Mark II be announced at NAB uh, this year, which would be really interesting and exciting to see. But what could be that, again, as I was mentioned, what could be that last one? Many people are suggesting that it is a GH7. So a successor of the GH6, uh, a camera that I really enjoyed using. I don't have it anymore, I sold it. Um, but I really love the camera. The quality is just absolutely stunning. The, just, it was a great camera to just pick up, go and shoot. I've done a review on the GH6. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link up here. But a lot of people are, are waiting for the one thing that everybody wanted, especially since the G9 tube came out, was face detection autofocus in a GH6 focus camera. And that's sort of the thing I think most people are expecting to help continue the support of the Micro Four Thirds ecosystem. I think that's a very good guess, potential guess of what, what could be announced at NAB or at least coming up in the next couple of months. I think that's a great uh, guess. Um, and I, it would be something to be interesting to see. I would just be interested to see what other features outside of phase detection autofocus because it, uh, cause if it's just basically doing what the S5 II and the S5 II X did, which was basically offering the same recording options, the same features, just adding in phase detection autofocus. Great. I, that's great for Panasonic. And I know that is their focus, uh, for their cameras moving forward, but I kind of still want a couple more things from them. Again, the big thing for me is the fact that with their full frame lineups, better frame rate options, better rolling shutter options. But for their Micro Four Third line, I really want to see, t um, I really want to see open gate 10-bit 422 ProRes. I want to see 10-bit 422 open gate. Uh, and so I can really start taking them seriously with their open gate options because as, as I'm sorry, compared to the options that could be coming from things like Zcam, Confinity, and of course you got Blackmagic with their open gate, uh, 12 bit raw, 10 bit 420 is just not enough anymore. But these are my thoughts on the potential cameras that we could be seeing. I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know, leave your comments down below. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, Take care, everyone.